Welcome to another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I'm your host, uh, Mike Hummer. Thank you all in the live audience for coming. And uh, today we'll be going over uh, how to defeat the perk defense or the uh, Sicilian dragon. So both are very kind of similar because uh, black setup will be uh, Fian Kettering the bishop along the long diagonal here. And there's a very good ways for white to just go on the attack right away and checkmate the black's king. So here we go. So white starts out e4, black plays c5. So this will be the Sicilian defense. White counters knight f3, black plays d6. White goes for the center with d4, takes takes. Black plays knight f6, keeping his options open for, you know, getting his bishop either here or here, still undetermined at this point. But now he's attacking our pawn. So we can just simply defend it with knight to c3. All right, so we're defended. And so now black makes the choice to play his pawn to g6, considering it would take one, well, he could play e6 followed by bishop to e7, but he, he decides he'll go with g6, and this will start the Sicilian dragon. Yeah. So white plays bishop to e3, because his idea is to put the queen and bishop in a battery and then attack this h6 square. But by playing bishop to e3 right now, it lets black uh, uh, try to uh, try to make this bishop and queen battery never happen. What move can white make or black make? It's black move to to get this bishop off of e3. Yes, adjourn. I know a way to like stop him from playing bishop to h6. All right, but we're looking at a way to uh, to harass this bishop right now. Yes. Uh, the knight to uh, g, yeah. Knight, yeah, knight to g4 would, would attack this bishop. So now he would have to move this bishop again. And if he didn't, if he played queen to d2, then we could just take, and queen takes, and now bishop here, and now nobody is going to be able to harass this bishop anymore. Okay, so if you're playing on the black side of, of this uh, Sicilian defense or perk defense, you would want to, uh, you would love to trade this knight for this bishop because if this bishop's gone, then uh, your dark square bishop will be there to stay on uh, g7. Okay? But black just proceeds with his own plan of bishop to g7. So now white plays f3 to stop all that, all that from happening. But he wanted to prepare, prepare that move, bishop to e3, by playing f3 first. So he just got the move order incorrect. So black castles, queen to d2. So when the queen and bishop are on the same diagonal, it's called a battery. So if anybody ever, if you hear about batteries, that's what it means. They're on the same diagonal. Just those pieces or others? When, uh... Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of rook and queen battery. Yeah, when they're on the same, same line. Okay. Yep. So knight to c6. So now black is setting up white for a trap here. So he knows that he wants to put his bishop on h6. But would that be good right now to do that, even though that's his plan? The answer is no, because the knight could come down and take his knight, and then if I would take back, bishop takes, or he's got even better, because if the knight takes here, bishop takes, this would just win a pawn for uh for black. So black is even better when he plays bishop to h6, which would be 
what, what can black play to get the most amount of material right now? Adjourn. Bishop takes h6. Bishop takes h6 because I have to take back, and now I get the whole knight for free. Because in this position, bishop takes h6. If I take here, I'm threatening the queen, but unfortunately the bishop will take, giving me check. So it would be illegal for my knight to take the queen. Okay? So, so I cannot play my bishop to h6 right now because he, uh, he would simply take it and then win my knight. So what move should white play to eliminate that threat? <laughs> All right, as a, yeah, from the audience, they said, just take the knight. All right. So bishop to h6, but now this b file is open. So black is going to attack it and try to get some counterplay here. So white decides to live on the edge here and castle into this, uh, danger zone. So now black can threaten a checkmate and it's always good to threaten checkmate with queen to b6 threatening queen takes b2 checkmate. All right. White prepares, he plays b3 here and now this is getting tricky because now queen goes to b4 and like in the last uh, lecture we did a couple weeks ago, we saw a lot of all these uh, all these good tricks along the uh, long diagonal here. So a lot of a lot of tricky things he can do because he's threatening a check, and then if uh, if everything else is away, he can put his queen on b2. If this uh, if the both knights are gone, it would be. Uh, checkmate. So he's got to watch out for that kind of stuff. So white plays king to b2, which is unfortunate because the knight can come down and maybe do something uh, dangerous here to, uh, to exploit this pin. Does he have any tricks here? Let's look. I don't see any tricks. Does anybody see any tricks? <laughs> if I see, because Black didn't see any tricks either in this position. Bishop h6. Bishop h6. Oh, <laughs> Queen takes. Yeah, that's what actually is played in the game. He decides. He decides he doesn't see any of these uh, these knight tricks. So he decides just to eliminate the threat. Queen takes h6. So now black's plan should be to play a5 and a4 and try to get a checkmate that way. Okay. Say he plays bishop to e6 here. So now black has a, has a good attack going. It'd be even better with a5, a4. So now white really needs to get his attack going as quick as possible or else he's going to get checkmated. All right, so white decides he'll start with g4. h4 is the more conventional way, h4, h5, but white decides g4. Black proceeds with c5, and white plays h4. Now, if I'm playing, if, if, if I was playing as the black pieces here, I would just proceed with the plan, right? Because if bishop takes, that loses the bishop. Bishop takes, and I cannot take back because my piece is in a pin, okay? So I would just proceed with the plan, okay? Same thing with a5, a4, if, if black played a5, and then got a4 in. Let's just say he does this and that. My, my, I can't take here because queen takes 
and then uh, this pawn is in a pin. Okay, so that's why that a5, a4 is pretty strong. But after c5, black plays a mystery move, rook to a8. After after white play h4, he, he plays rook to a8, and he doesn't need to do that because the 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 pawn doesn't need any backing up because he's in no in no concern that his pawn's going to get captured on a4. It should it should be there. It should be fine. So white can't capture it. And if he does, he'll lose a knight. So so he didn't his attack is too slow right now. You want to be as fast as you can when you're attacking. All right? All right, so my, my, he let my attack catch up with his because he's dawdling around with this rook and this other pawn. All right, rook to a8. So white plays h5, and now black plays a5. But it, it's too slow. So now pawn takes. If he takes this way, the game would be over. Everybody see how the game would be over? Yeah. Queen to h8, checkmate. Okay, so he has to take back the other way. All right, so, so now you ask yourself, why am I not checkmating him? Why is queen takes h7 not checkmate? Yes, adjourn. Because the knight will take the queen. Because the knight would take the queen, okay. So you need to be asking yourself questions like this during the game, like, Dang, I wish that could happen. How can I make it happen? So an idea is I'm going to attack the knight. Attack the piece that's giving you the most trouble, that's aggravating you. So you, 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 you attack the knight, but now he goes here. All right. So now your queen is kind of can't move to anywhere that she won't get taken. So, so now, but now but we can just take a knight. So we calculate, okay, so we took a five point piece the rook for a three point piece, but we saw when after he takes the rook, we can take the bishop with check, yeah. So we're, we're doing good, <laughs> yeah. So we just traded a five-point five piece, but we got two of his minor pieces, and now we're back on the attack with, with the check. All right, king h8. So we might as well just keep, keep taking more stuff. So now he plays a4, and we're not going to do the same move he did, or else, you know, we'll lose a knight. Even if we... No, because now we can take the rook with checkmate. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we want to watch out because we might get checkmated. <laughs> yeah, we might get checkmated. That's why he wouldn't do it. <laughs> A4. But we're not going to play that. We're not going to play that. Let's see what we do play. We just take another pawn. Queen takes d6. Rook takes f3. All right, so now he's threatening to take us. No going back. No going back. No going back. In this position, so, so in this position, after queen takes, instead of taking this pawn, a3 with the check would be pretty strong. Because king moves, queen takes, and now he's threatening a checkmate that we might not be able to get out of. So you got to watch out for these, uh, these attacks. So, so knight takes a4 <laughs> was the correct move after all. <laughs> after all. That might have been your only move. Right. But, but luckily, he took there, and now 
now we can try to win this rook up here or try to get a checkmate. e5 check, king to g8. So queen to d5 check would win the rook, but white wants to get a checkmate here. So luckily, he doesn't go back to force a draw. He plays king to e7, and that allows another one of my pieces to get involved in the checkmate process. And that would be the rook. Rook to d7 check, king g6, and now how can we end them? We actually have two. Queen to, e. Queen to which one? Uh, d6, right? No, d7. Unfortunately, if we play queen to d6, he, could, he can take. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Queen to g7, checkmate. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, you just look through your checks and say, oh, well, I could play here, but he could take, and then we'll just look. And then I'm still protecting this pawn through an x-ray. Yeah, so, so in the games, you've got to watch out for these checkmates here. It, yeah, th this is a very, very common, common attack here, where a3 check, queen takes. So white needed to be a little more careful, but he was just lucky that black really slowed down his attack by moving his rook over and then didn't capitalize when he saw it. Now we get an idea of how to checkmate somebody when they're playing uh, the perk defense or the Sicilian dragon. So, so now we'll, we'll put, uh, put another game up there that's very similar, and, and you guys should be just shouting out these moves very, very fast, okay? So white plays e4, black proceeds c5, the Sicilian, knight f3, d6, d4, pawn takes, knight captures, knight f6. So even though we're in a hurry to, to you know, get our bishop out and everything, we always have to be respecting our opponent's moves. Knight to c3, g6, so bishop to e3, remember, is that a good move or do we have a better way to prepare bishop to e3? F3. Yes, we should prepare it with f3, okay? That prevents this knight from coming in, but black kind of has his own plans, that's a lot of times in chess you're like, oh, I'm playing this opening. I'm going to play the Sicilian dragon, okay? And he, he knows, okay, by playing the Sicilian dragon, I'll just get my bishop out, I'll get castled, everything's good. But by speeding through the opening like that, he's missing ideas to, to eliminate this knight. So, so just because you think you know the opening really well, make sure you, you're paying attention to your opponent's threats. So bishop to g7 are his mistakes that you can capitalize on. Bishop to g7, now f3. Black castles, queen to d2, bishop to d7, so bishop to h6. So we got our queen and bishop battery, and we got our bishop on h6, so things are going good. Knight to c6, just like in the other game, he wants to take, so we'll take, and then I'll get the free knight. So whenever they do that, we can, we can just take. Well, we, got, we can't just sit there and do nothing. We have, to, we have to do something. So we can take, and now the bishop takes. White to side. Uh, you could. I mean, it's, it's interchangeable. You could take whichever piece you wanted first. It really doesn't matter. As long as you do something, as long as you capture one of them, you won't lose any pieces. So now, so now white decides to play g4 first, because if he plays h4, black can counter with h5, okay? This is a very typical idea 
for black's defense, okay? That prevents g4 because black takes, takes, and then black can take that, and then he'd be up a pawn, okay? So, so white plays g4 to stop him from playing h5. Black plays e6. White castles. So he did that. It's not often you castle and you get a threat. So by castling, what move can, uh, can white play now? You can take the pawn on d6. OK? Because the rook is helping protecting the queen. So black decides to defend with knight to e8. And that cuts off the connection between his queen and rook. And now his knight is a permanent defender. And also, the knight is no longer defending h5. And it's no longer on the attack at all. So that's really not a, not a great spot for that knight. You want your pieces out there doing stuff, not just on the back row defending. Not very strong piece. All right, so white proceeds with the attack, h4. Black counters, queen to e7. Just keep pushing those pawns up. Rook to d8. Gets another defender on this pawn. So now white decides to just get another pawn in the attack before, before he taking. So black plays knight to c7. So now takes, pawn f takes, bishop c4 attacks the pawn, a6. So now white's going to try to try to get all his pieces down there. That f4 kind of wasn't really good for his plan because he really wanted to get his queen up there. So f4. Kind of, kind of blocking him. He needs to push f5 to get this uh, queen check in there. h2. b5 attacks the bishop. He decides to play, uh, to double his rooks and attack here. So how should black defend this? Yes. You rook to h8. Rook to h8. Might as well. Good. Rook to h8. So now he's got a, he can't forget that his, that his bishop's being attacked, so, so he'll retreat it. He doesn't want to take it. And now black's getting some counterplay here, d5. Pawn takes d5. Pawn takes d5. And now he finally gets an f5, threatening queen to h5 check. Queen to h6 check, excuse me. So when black plays D, d4 and he gets the check in black is going to be in a lot of trouble here so king to f6 the move that was played in the game was g5 check and now the king is on the run king takes f5 rook to f1 check King to e5. And now he's in a lot of trouble, huh? So the queen and king, when they're in the same line, you want to get another piece in that same line. So who you think? <laughs> Rook check, OK? So if the king and queen are ever lined up, try to get a rook in there, OK? If they're lined up on the same diagonal, Get a bishop in there. Yeah. All right, king, king moves, rook takes, king takes. And it's not over yet for, uh, for black. He's not out of the woods yet. Queen to g7, check. King to d6. Then you get the rook in there. And now, now in this position, black just gave it up. What do you think White's next move would have been? Mm 
Well, he probably would have just taken the night, huh? <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. So if we play queen to e7 here, unfortunately, the king can go back here and protect the knight. Where? <laughs> no. the, the simplest solution is just to capture the knight and just say good night. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's not good night. He's still getting away. A3. Now can we say good night and take the pawn? Take the pawn. With checkmate, okay? So, so in that game, White kind of messed up his attack, huh? So this is the point where White messed up his attack by playing f4. It took him a really long time to recover. He should have just captured right away. Pawn takes, right, you want to take. And now queen check, OK? That's what you're going for. The move f4 kind of stopped it, stopped this whole attack here. Check. And now you're doing pretty good. This is probably a lot better variation than uh, than the one that he went into. All right, and then you can just try to pile on on these pieces, okay? So you don't really want to block your queen off of that h6 square by playing f4, okay? Now here's the final game, and we'll see if we can find a quick checkmate in the middle game in this one. Unfortunately, the white player in this game did not, all right? But maybe we can be better than them, all right? So, so we were looking at games coming out of the Sicilian, the last two games, the Sicilian dragon defense. This is a more conventional perk defense where black does not play c5. He starts out with d6, as we saw. That was black's second move in all those variations. So this is the perk defense. Whenever somebody plays a move like d6, or e6, or c6, a move that does not attack, you know, uh, e4 or d4 in your position, should always just play d4. And that way, you got the whole center to yourself, okay? Knight f6 attacks our pawn, so we bring out our knight, g6, bishop e3 again. So knight should jump right in. So, so always make sure when you're playing white to play that f3 move first or else, uh, you know, eventually black might come down and play uh, knight to g4 and attack you out of there. All right, queen to well, black castles. So that's a, that's a great thing about this uh, perk defense and the Sicilian uh, dragon is you get castled very, very quick. And look, you have a lot of defenders around your king, but unfortunately, white has some good, uh, good attacking chances, OK? So you got to take the good and the bad when you play uh, the perk defense or the Sicilian uh, dragon. So these are just ways that white can try to take advantage of them. Queen to d2, c6. So as we've seen time and time again, the bishop goes to h6. He wants to trade this dark squared bishop. He's like the fire of the uh, dragon, okay? Because if he sticks around, as we saw um, in some of the previous games, if he sticks around, he can be uh, forced to possibly get uh, the, the knight, the pawn, or the rook, okay? So that's why white is so eager to trade off this, these dark squared bishops, okay? So black plays e5, he doesn't trade. So white takes, king takes. Knight g to e2, defending the pawn. Queen to b6, attacks the pawn. And so now, with this queen to b6 move, he's attacking this pawn, and he's attacking this pawn twice. White only has 
Well, White's got enough defenders. So he decides the castle, that brings a defender to this B2 square and another defender to D4. All right. Brings his knight out. So once again, he doesn't want to play H4 because black could counter H5, okay? So you prepare that move with G4. Pawn takes D4. And of course, if our idea is white is to checkmate the black king, right? Queen H6 and get checkmate. We don't want to trade our queen. So knight takes, all right? Whenever you got a, an attack going, do not trade attackers or else there will be nobody there to checkmate at the end. Black plays knight e5, so it's threatening the pawn here. So just protect. And now your rooks are connected. Black counters with d5. So white plays g5 eliminating a defender of d5 here. So when he plays knight back to e8, he can take, pawn takes, knight takes. And now he's winning a pawn and attacking the queen. So things are going well for white here, very well. So queen to c5. And now white decides to play queen to f4. All right. So what is the trick here? What is white hoping black plays in this position? Queen takes knight. Queen takes the undefended knight. OK. So is this a good move for black to play queen takes knight, or is it just devastation? Bad move, right, because this rook is attacking this queen through an x-ray, meaning if this knight moves and for some reason this queen is, is not allowed to move in the next move, he's going to take it. And the only way for a piece not to be allowed to move or frozen is if he's in check. So white has two checks with the knight. You better be careful which one you, you pick because one... One is good, one is bad. All right, go for it. Knight to f5. Knight to f5 is the correct move. Knight f5 check. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Unfortunately, if you play uh, knight to e6 check, queen can take the knight. And then uh, the rook <laughs> cannot capture the queen. So you got to watch out for that. OK. So. So now it's black, he knows I can't take the knight, so he's got to figure out something else to do. So he decides to put his knight on c6 here. Knight to f6. Knight captures d4. Rook takes d4. Bishop to f5. So now, who is threatening checkmate here? <laughs> Black is. Okay, obviously I'm not. I could think about threatening checkmate, but then I'll get checkmated myself, all right? So, so even though you might be on the attack the whole time, it just takes one move for, uh, for uh, your opponent to try to get a checkmate here. So you always got to be concerned about your king, okay? So if you're just playing your moves like, oh, I'm going to get checkmate here, guess what? Your king is going to fall. So, so always watch out for your opponent's attacks, okay? Bishop f5. So white has a really cool move to stop it, rook to c4. Queen to a5, and now, so now he's attacking my pawn here, all right? But 
I'm gonna check I'm gonna threaten my own checkmate here, okay? Queen takes check, okay? Well that's what I should play. And that's what I do play. Okay. So so what's the only way that black can uh black can stop this uh queen well he's got a couple of different ways, of course. H five? <laughs> yeah, uh oh. Check mate. So you gotta be really careful how you wanna stop this checkmate, okay? So H five does not do the trick. Rook H eight. Does Rook H eight do the trick? That doesn't work either. So you got to be really careful. Mike? Yes, you got it. Knight takes f6. Knight takes f6. That's yeah, child's play. Just take it. Yeah. All right. So check. Oh, you want to play king to h8? All right, we'll play king to h8. That's actually what what's played in the game. All right. Let's just keep going for the throat here. We got him on the run. I don't think there is a way we can stop checkmate here. All right, so we got the king in the corner here. All right, all right, so just hold on, hold on. We have a, a, newly, uh, a newly crowned national master in the audience here. <laughs> from, from, he, all he's been doing is going to my beginner breakdown for five weeks and all of a sudden, his rating is 2362. And that's all he's been doing. That's it. Just begin a breakdown. <laughs> and now he's, now he's awesome. All right, so queen to h6. So what am I threatening? Queen to g7. Queen to g7, OK. So what's the only way black can stop this checkmate? All right, rook to g8. And now we have a very exciting move in this position. For white. For white, yep. So, rook to h4 looks pretty good. But then black plays g5 stopping the checkmate all right so we got to be quick here we got to be quick oh. yes queen takes, queen takes h7 check very good so he has to take and now we just yep and then we just checkmate him you see and he can't go here. Nobody can block. And the game would be over, OK? So that's really how you want to play. You want to play pedal to the metal, all right? Always threaten those checkmates as long as you're not getting uh, checkmated. And uh, you'll get him. You see that? Pretty neat. But unfortunately, white played a little. Uh, little bad here. Pawn takes king to h8 and now he was concerned about this threat. Queen takes, queen check, and then and eventually a rook check. So he played a, th a3 to stop all that. And it's too slow. Rook a to d8. So he plays rook to d1. So he should be thinking about checkmating not uh not anything else queen to e5 well it's not checkmate because the rook the rook isn't on g8 so queen takes pawn in this position is not checkmate because he can he can retreat to g8 All right, queen to e5. And now white decides to trade 
and this is not good. Queen takes h2, and then queen takes a7. So, so white still has a decent position, but it's not checkmate, right? That's what you're after. So you got to make sure that when you have your opponent on the rope, to checkmate him while you can, or else you're, you're letting black get all this counterplay, and it, probably he'll eventually uh, beat you. Queen to, as, as we'll see. Queen to d6. Now he's threatening a checkmate. So we got to stop that. Now he gets our pawn. And this is no fun for white anymore. F4. Bishop e6 attacks our rook. Rook to b4. Rook to d4. He had take us with check. So, so now we have an interesting end game. He's got three pass pawns. I have three pass pawns. So pretty much whoever does not get checkmated and whoever turns one of these into a queen first will probably win. So, so this is going to be interesting. Rook e4 attacks the, uh, our guy, queen to d3. All right, rook to e3, queen to d2. I guess we could be checking, but it really, it really wouldn't do us much good to check him here because he'll just put his king to back to g7. So. so no reason to really check for no reason. Queen to d2, queen to e5. But he'll check anyway. <laughs> check it. See, we want to get something where we'll, we'll win something when we check, not just checking for the sake of checking. Rook to b8. Now, now we'll try to get something going. So in this position, black tries to get a trade going. So do we have any kind of checkmates here? We have a lot of scary checks, but unfortunately, none of them will lead to checkmate. We could play here, then he'll go to h6. If we go here, he'll go here. So even though all our, all our checks look pretty scary, they don't actually do anything. So white decides to just, just trade it off. And now he's in a lot of trouble. After rook to e1, our uh, bishop is now in a pin. So what move must uh, white make here? Push one of the pawns. Push one of the pawns. That's actually what is played in the game. b4. Because he really doesn't have to be concerned about this, because he'll always have king to c1. So. So b4 is what was played. So now it's a race. h5, b5, h4, b6. So now black looks like he's in trouble because he's going to be uh, one behind, right? Mm -hmm. So he plays rook to e5. So if white plays b7, Rook plays check, and then Rook takes the pawn. Okay, so after Rook to e5, so he's got to stop this check from happening. So he plays king to c1. But he plays Rook to b5 anyway, right? All right, so black plays rook to d6, protects the pawn. King to e7. Bishop e2, the counterattack. So bishop takes. 
And now black makes a very powerful move here. Can anybody see a powerful move for black? <laughs> well, we have one, one guy thinking he sees a powerful move. All right. <laughs> Very good. Adjourn. <laughs> My protege coming up with a great move. Bishop to d5. Look at that. Look at that. You're controlling everything. So white pretty much can just give up here. So a real easy uh, victory for black after uh, bishop to d5. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you all for coming to a beginner breakdown. Hopefully, now you know how to uh, defeat uh, the park defense. Mm -hmm.